robots are finding new application domains uh, as the technology develops. This will bring robots in much closer interaction with, uh, with humans. They will become uh, an integrative part of our lives. So this means that it will be a uh, really emotional, physical, cognitive interaction with, uh, with humans. So this brings, brings the promise of assisting the workload, for instance, or supplementing our capacities. So it will create a lot of uh, uh, promises, but this will also bring some challenges and some opportunities that need to be understood in order to promote this, uh, this technology. The quick advances in robotics make it difficult to understand the real state of, uh, of the technology and this creates negative perceptions and overestimated expectations in the public at large. So in inputs, we want to contribute to clarify this lack of understanding in, in, in the state of the technology. So this is why we bring together experts to debate on a new research and innovation paradigm for robotics uh, in general, um, but also in particular for those robots that are more closely interacting with humans. The European Commission is very interested in uh, promoting the uptake of these technologies into the society. They have been investing uh, along the uh, last years uh, a lot of money in this, uh, in this field. So the uh, Inbots Consortium has been commissioned in order to analyze, understand and propose solutions uh, to overcome those, uh, those barriers. We are uh, really concerned about uh, barriers uh, around robotics and how uh, we can better include it in our society. Uh, we are working on responsible research and innovation. We are taking care of uh, uh, intellectual property rights, uh, liability, uh, the poli public policies uh, according to taxation, social security law, and also the uh, impact of uh, robotics in the labor market. Robots and artificial intelligence systems that are painting beautiful paintings for us. They are composing songs, they are writing novels and screenplays. They will be very soon interpreting movies. Does the currently enforced legal system for protecting copyrights uh, fit these uh, new situations? Do we have to revise everything? Is the concept of an author and an artist something that we have to change? For 200 years, social scientists and economists have thought about the question, what is the impact of new technologies on labor markets and society at large? And since 1980, what we see is that there's been a slowdown in growth in living standards and a rise in inequality. And that's a challenge. However, fortunately, recent scientific discoveries have also given us the insights to deal with these challenges, to make sure that we realize the potential of digital technologies for the benefit of everyone in society. There are a lot of fears in the general public about robotics, uh, partially coming from science fiction. Now, I don't think there's gonna be a Terminator, but we should discuss the ethical issues. Um, for example, about responsibility, and we should try to have robotics that's inclusive, that's beneficial to everyone. In Inbots, we discuss um, bring stakeholders together to discuss these issues. We are trying to identify and assess, on the one hand, the new risks that potentially new technologies will bring about, and at the same time, manage such risks. That might entail rethinking our liability system, but in a functional perspective, not because robots are uh, subjects or agents, but because better rules can ensure that we get safe products on the, on the one hand and we get such products on the market, but also on the other hand that we provide prompt compensation to the victim. Overall, um, this entails conceiving the right incentives for all the players involved, researchers, business users and um, uh, consumers. So the most important thing to understand about artificial intelligence is that the artificial part means that something has been built, there's something deliberate behind that. So when we say that there's no reason to worry about um, 
uh, the, you know, an, an artifact that cannot be predicted, that might need a special kind of liability or something like that. It's not because it's impossible to build something that you couldn't understand. It's that it's the obligation of the people who do build the artifacts to build things that we can understand. There is a lot of misconceptions in the public debate about regulation and innovation. First, it often said that regulation stagnates innovation. This is not true. Actually, regulation provides more certainty, more concrete level playing field. Secondly, often said that regulation is costly. This is not true. Actually, lack of regulation, incoherencies in regulation or divergent standards create much more costs. Therefore, we need to focus on developing these good tools for regulation, engaging together with technical communities, legal communities and public at large. The primary objectives of the InBots project are to promote entrepreneurship in the interactive robotic field and to provide non-technical support to small-medium enterprises. To meet these goals, we decided to realize a white paper to collect all the experiences or some experiences of real entrepreneurs and to highlight the main barriers that they have faced during the growing of the company. The most critical element is the humans, the human resources. Uh, I always say that uh, the only reason why we can get and we can accept the challenges uh, of developing new exoskeletons is because we have the best team. I think that there's a, a common denominator in all the company that is the most important value ever, that is the team. Finding the right person. So we completely believe that uh, we are human and if we can work together and create a strong team, so also a bunch of, so few people can make something that could change the world. So we are trying to do this, and for me it's the best element ever. And there's going to be a lot of room for developments in the future, but there's going to be a lot of people trying to chase success. Uh, so you need to find your, the right solution, work on it, prove it, uh, partner up with the top uh, clinicians, with the top institutions, top hospitals, and then uh, drive your development from there. My task within the InBots project is to look at the intersection between intellectual property and uh, robotics companies. In particular, I'm looking at um, uh, strategies, intellectual property strategies adopted by robotic companies, uh, universities that do research in this field. These are very important assets within the uh, robotic industry. Um, filing patent applications, trying to protect technology by relying on trade secrets is crucial in order to promote and recoup investment. Our main goal is to develop a standardization and benchmarking strategy for interactive robots in the manufacturing, healthcare and consumer domain. Therefore, all project partners from different domains are closely working together to first of all identify the um, current challenges and needs of the robotics community in terms of standardization. And in order to um, develop a comprehensive and goal-oriented strategy, we also envisage to work closely with uh, the European and international um, standardization system, especially with the standardization technical committees working on interactive robotics. We want to gain knowledge of the robotic community's requirements in terms of standardization under the regulatory framework. Imports therefore invited stakeholders engaged in the research, development, manufacturing or employment of interactive robots to share their experience on this topic. To identify challenges um, in the terms of interactive robots um, that can be overcome by generally acknowledged requirements such as standards. And what we identified is that there are essential KPIs missing such as uh, performance, safety or economics and also that the efficiency indicators are missing in healthcare, manufacturing and the consumer domain. So that was really good in terms of sensing what the community actually needs. In InBots we are trying to find a, a 
common framework and uh, identifying also which are the best practices, which are the needs that uh, still need to be completed and uh, the patterns that we can, uh, fo can, can that students can follow to, to get the specific uh, knowledge on uh, robotics. I think at the university level we need uh, to have uh, highly accessible resources online that talk about robotics at different levels. Uh, so we can have uh, lectures that are uh, more targeted to people that already studied engineering and lectures that are more uh, targeted to a general public so that even people working in other fields can uh, know about the benefits of robotics. Since many years uh, we are working on uh, what is now called educational robotics and this is uh, not only to teach robotics as a subject, but also to use robots as a tool to foster students and to foster their learning toward technological, but not only subjects. We believe that using educational robotics can improve the computational thinking of the students. And this, we believe, is a fundamental skill for the society of the next century. The education systems, uh, particularly the curriculum and the focus on assessment across Europe but also internationally, uh, means that the curriculums are packed. Uh, there's very little time for new innovations. Um, and robotics is a really interesting topic because it brings together lots of different subjects. But teaching in schools is often very siloed. You have your maths lesson, you have your science lesson, and they don't mix in between. So we actually need to rethink the way we teach in schools. I think what is best, what is good uh, each time depends on the age level uh, that uh, of children we have to address each time. Uh, for instance, a, a good practice for early school years is uh, uh, the tangible programming. Uh, useful also for children at preschool age. Students uh, at the age of uh, uh, 13 plus years uh, make their own robots starting almost from scratch. Uh, they use uh, simple materials, low cost materials for everyday life to construct their robots and they program them using visual programming tools which makes programming tasks easy for children. I think this is the future for educational robotics. It's important to raise the awareness what robotics can do for different target groups, um, but also for them to get an understanding what is robotic, what can a robot do for me, what kind of robot um, could I benefit of using both at work but also as assistants at home. We need to standardize the, uh, the interaction between robots and human beings much, much more. We have also to standardize not only the interaction but the requirements regarding safety, regarding ethics and uh, to make that available so we sort of take away the complexity and you can do that in a number of steps. In the future we need more interdisciplinary groups developing technology and these groups have to comprise physicians, psychologists, engineers, technicians, computer experts and so on. From all stakeholders we need to talk together to solve problems which are real problems and we do not, we should not develop something which is just for, for fun.